a gun in the face. Then all of a sudden, they all kind of lined up. They pointed their guns at me. And this is the point where I thought, I'm going to die today. Started two years of horror for an American in Venezuela. They said, you need to give us your phone and get ready because you're coming with us. I'm Becky Bruce, and I spent a year researching and piecing together Josh and Tammy Holt's story about their ordeal in a notorious prison. That's when everything started to turn bad. We had another pound on the door. Boom, boom, boom. And there was the police once again. You can binge all of the episodes of Hope in Darkness on kslpodcasts.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, welcome to Project Recovery. I'm Casey Scott. That's Dr. Matt Woolley. What you're getting here is a bonus episode, Dr. Matt. Bonus means good. It is. This is a good bonus. Yeah, this is a good bonus. Yeah. Like, have you ever got a bad bonus? I don't think so. Well, no, I don't think so. Some people might say it's a bad bonus, but it's extra, so it's better. Extra is always good. Hey, today we got uh, Susan Peterson in. She's with the Sober Foundation. Now, we heard a little bit about the Sober Foundation in the earlier podcast. We had Cameron Marshall on. Right. Cameron Cameron gave a good review of this. So he said he'd been probably, if you counted his multiple stays at different treatment facilities, probably 13 stays in all. Right. Is that our, what's the record? I can't remember what our, our we should have a, a whiteboard. Right. We used to do that when I worked yeah. at the fair. We'd do a mullet count. Mullet count. Yeah. Anytime okay. somebody would walk by, we go mullet one, mullet two, <laughs> mullet three. But yeah, yeah, we could do a, a treatment count and see yeah. who's got the record. I, he's I know he's it, pretty close. He's in the running. Yeah. He's up say. there. I don't know if it counts because he hit him multiple times. It counts. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Well, it's already said seven programs, 13 times. Yeah. Yeah. And, but he spent a, a lot of time there, and he, we asked him, why was it different this time? Why did he stay sober this time? And his answer was, he went to sober living. Right. And we kind of uh, talked a little bit about the benefits of sober living. And how sober living is a kind of a step down, sort of, you're in, you're in uh, recovery proper mm-hmm. for, for a certain period of time. You're in that, like you like to call it the pink cloud, you're feeling great. And then instead of just going right back to the old environment, which probably includes uh, friends and family who are still using and and problems where you might fall back in and relapse quickly, Mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to step down back into real life, but with support. Yeah. And uh, Susan Peterson, who uh, started the Sober Foundation, uh, started this for a reason, and we're going to find out why that reason is. Susan, welcome to the podcast. And thank you for inviting me. Um so why did you want to start the Sober Foundation? What was... It's the Sobriety Foundation. Yes. And um, w- 10 years ago, um, my son passed away from a drug overdose. And I had uh, four friends that were in recovery come to me and ask me if I wanted to be one of the signers on the 5013C um, and start a nonprofit that funded sober living for people that couldn't afford it. And I thought that was just such an awesome way to give back um especially my son he said to me numerous times mom i can get sober i just don't know how to live it you know i can i can detox i can be on the road to recovery and then i just go right back to my old ways that's that is such a true insightful statement that he was able to recognize that he can get sober but living it was a nut, was an, another level challenge. Whole different ball game. I that's think that's true so for so many people. After yeah. you graduate a treatment center, yeah. Because I remember being in the treatment center and after two weeks, going, "Hey, I didn't die." I thought if I went two weeks without alcohol, I was going to die. Sure. And so you get this idea in your head. You're like, "Holy crap! I can do this. I can actually be sober and and, and have conversations and have a good time, laugh, feel my emotions, and do all these things that I thought I would never be able to do without the aid of alcohol. I can do it. But when you test your metal is when you walk out those doors. That's why they call it the pink cloud, because in there, everything's easy. They're telling you what to do. They're telling you where to go. They're feeding you, uh, and they're keeping everything at bay. They're all the stuff. You don't have access to it. So it's really easy to stay sober. 
Sure. But when you get out and all of a sudden nobody's telling you what to do, nobody's telling you to get up, telling you where to go, and you're left to your own thoughts. Well, and and like we've talked about, um, just because you got sober doesn't mean your problems went away. Right. Most likely you started using or continued using to avoid problems. And so now you're back facing those problems. You're sober, but the problems haven't gone away and the environment probably hasn't changed. And that's we see that relapse rate go steadily up the more that's a person's situation. So uh, tell us, what does, in your opinion now, it's been 10 years since you lost your son yes, and you've been uh, providing this um, benefit to so many people. What have you seen that it does for people in our community having a sober living opportunity? Well, what, 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 what we do is we give uh, a two-month scholarship. We give the first two months in, in sober living uh, we pay for the first few months. And so what that does is it gives them a chance to get a job. Ninety uh, percent of our, all of the people after the two months have a job. And, oh, that's great. And it makes it really nice. So now they can start paying for their sober living home. Most of them stay in the sober living, just like Cameron did, uh, for a long amount of time. And th- and it, feel, it makes them feel good because now they can pay for their own living. Um, it helps them save a little bit so that they can maybe put some money towards uh, a, a truck or whatever fines, yeah, whatever expenses that they have. Um, so it just kind of gets them on the road to to a, a sober life. Um, we've since we've been in uh, in existence in 2012, we've given out over 1,200 scholarships. Oh, that's wow. great! And um, and it's been so rewarding. Um, so healing for me to see that my son couldn't get his life back on track, but so many other people, just like Cameron, has gotten his life back on track. So so rewarding to see that. Um, I see I see my son in almost every scholarship that we give out and the struggles that he had. Um, well, your son lives on through oh, this foundation he, and through the help that you're doing, and I and think you know, that's what's so great. I have so much help. I have a wonderful board. Um, I have an amazing family. I have nine brothers and sisters, and they have helped me uh, immensely. Um, and, and you know, we wouldn't be able to do this without all the donors. You know, we, we don't get very many um, grants. We haven't gotten very many uh, state grants. It's been all corporate and individual donors. And Let so me- that speaks for the state of Utah, I think. Yeah. I think Dr. Matt was saying last week that this is a very generous state when it comes to mental health and resources, and people do want to see the good in people and help out. I I want to ask you a question. Does insurance cover sober living? No, it does not. And so that's why we wanted to put our money into this is because we felt like it was just such an important part of the recovery process. And so they come to us. In fact, I was just on a phone call today as I was riding up to the podcast about this girl that was being kicked out of a sober living home because she had the wrong, she had, she didn't have the funds. And they, they thought that she had the funds to do it when they first put her in and she was uh, in a, only in a week at the sober living place and then she got kicked out. And um, I had Ryan, Ryan Hymas who is on our board and he works for I Am Recovery and he called and he goes, Susan, is there any way that you have the funding that you can take care of this girl for two months? She has nowhere else to go. And and with, without this, Susan, she's going to be on the street. And that is in the case with most of our people. If, if they don't get funding from us, they're back out on the street. And then they don't have that time to to get a job and start to become self-sufficient. Sure. Yeah. And I think that, that that is a crucial piece to recovery is the sober living, is that transition that, you know, giving them the tools to baby step into recovery and, and, and try to utilize those tools that were given to them in treatment. Sure. If people wanted to help out and donate to you guys, is there a way to do that? Yes. Um, our website is sobrietyfoundation.org. And I just wanted to to tell you this because we we did a huge reorganization of our foundation and um we hired a grant writer let our executive director go and i took over the executive director position um you know i've been with it since the inception of our foundation and so i knew the ins and outs of everything that we've gone through uh all the hard times all the things that we've tried and hasn't worked and all the things that we've tried and have have worked 
one of the things that has worked is we have a sober speakeasy um, once a year, our annual fundraiser. It's this year on October 8th at the Grand America. And um, you can get tickets. You can call me, um, 801-427-3869, and uh, we'll, we'll get you a ticket, and we'll get you in the doors. And it's just a fun night. It's a take on um, the 20s. Kind of a, you know, everybody dresses Roaring in Roaring 20s flapping. theme. Yeah. yeah. Flappers and gangsters. And I hear you have, have some pretty cool speakers at this one. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Um, I don't know if you guys know Casey Scott. He's going to be one of our <laughs> keynotes. I'm wearing his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. Yeah. With that image. And Cameron Marshall. He is going to be our scholarship recipient that speaks this year. And we also have a Lemon Harrington, who is fabulous. Oh, we've had him on the show. Yeah. yeah. Amazing story of recovery. And yes. Dr. Matt's actually going to be sitting at the table with me. So if you want some free psychology, buy a ticket, <laughs> come to the event. Yeah, that's I'll introduce you to Dr. What Matt. What I was hoping to do is psychotherapy yeah. instead of mingling. But yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. Well, hey, it's all for a good cause. It bud. is for a good cause. I'm excited about it. And what a beautiful venue to be at the Grand America Hotel downtown. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful. And I don't want to forget Randall Carlisle. He's going to be our MC. MC. He We've was had our him MC. On the show. We've had him on the show. Yeah. We, he was our MC two years ago, and he did a fabulous job. And he's got one of the kindest hearts I've ever met. So I didn't want to leave him out because he's an important part of our program too. Once again, if people want tickets, they can go to your website. Yes, they can. It's two hundred dollars a seat, and um, and, we've and got all s- of that money goes to help. All of it goes to sober living. Perfect. All of it goes to sober living. Uh, an average sober living home a month is about eight hundred dollars, and so all the monies that are raised that night goes completely to sober living. I love it. Hey, Susan, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. And thank you for listening to Project Recovery right here on KSL. of this program are for informational purposes only. The program is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician, licensed therapist, or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard on this program. KSL does not recommend or endorse any specific tests, physicians, products, procedures, opinions, or other information that may be mentioned on the program. Reliance on any information provided on the program is solely at your own risk. It's the story of an American held in a dark Venezuelan prison. Then all of a sudden they all kind of lined up. They pointed their guns at me. And this is the point where I thought, I'm going to die today. I'm Becky Bruce. I spent a year working on Hope in Darkness, which now has more than 2 million downloads. Find it on kslpodcast.com or wherever you listen to podcasts.